In the early days of Mintra, when Mukesh Bansal was traveling back and forth between India and the US every month, he ended up in an emergency room in California. What Bansal tried to shrug off his jet lag turned out to be a viral form of meningitis. While the thought of giving up entrepreneurship did occur to him as he struggled to manage his health while meeting the demands of bootstrapping a company, but followed after his recovery was the rise of Mintra and Bansal's obsession with physical and mental well-being, which has now resulted in his new book, Hacking Health. Over the last 16 years, Mukesh Bansal, by his own admission, turned himself into a guinea pig of sorts, experimenting with varied diets and workouts to see what works for him and what doesn't. From getting himself tested at the Human Longevity Center in San Diego to using biohacking tools on a daily basis, he has done it all. And he says hacking health is simple. Sleep more, eat less and always move. In fact, in 2016, I remember asking Bansal after he exited Flipkart where he could set up his next venture. I'm not surprised. He said health. Cult Fit, which Bansal co-founded later that year, currently runs 600 cult fit centers across India and helps people control diabetes and work on their physical and mental health. The Tata Digital and Zomato backed company now aims to become fit for an IPO in the next 12 to 18 months. The last couple of years have certainly made us all act on our holistic well-being more than ever before. What's also in the spotlight today are the pressures of running a startup and the toll that it takes on young entrepreneurs. As we learn in this book, Bansal knows it all too well. Hello and welcome to Young Turks, India's longest running show on startups and entrepreneurship. I'm Shireen Bhan and to talk about his latest book on living a healthy life and his journey to being a holistic entrepreneur. Joining me on the show is Mukesh Bansal. Mukesh, always a pleasure. It's great to have you back on Young Turks. Thanks very much for joining us. Uh, uh, and, you know, we have enjoyed reading your book, Hacking Health. And, and his claim is the only book you'll ever need to live your healthiest life. Mukesh Bansal, are you living your healthiest life today? Absolutely, Shireen. I think uh, health is an obsession, passion, and also a profession for me. Uh, as part of cult fit, you know, something, you know, I've been working on last seven years, but for me, health and fitness goes a long way. I've always been very active, learning about health, trying different things. And over a period of time, I've learned, you know, health is simultaneously very simple and very complex. You know, as you earlier mentioned, you know, if I have to simplify, mm. it just boils down to eat less, you know, sleep more, always move. But then there are so many myths and so many fads and so much clutter and it gets very confusing for people to figure out how to pursue a healthy lifestyle. So in this book, I have tried to distill down everything I've learned about um, healthy lifestyle from my own experiments, research, talking to experts, as well as all our experience at Cult, you know, delivering good health for millions of people. So all of that, you know, hopefully uh, everything people need to know for pursuing healthy lifestyle, where they can both understand the science behind it, ancient wisdom, a lot of places ancient wisdom validates what modern science now knows and simple tools that people can practice. Well, you know, speaking of tools, et cetera, and you also talked about how health has become an obsession as far as you're concerned. I have to honestly say, Mukesh, when I was looking at all the stuff that you're experimenting with and the regimen that you follow, I'm frankly intimidated. You've got an aura ring that's worn on the finger that tracks all kinds of body function, a whoop band, a muse headband, a med wand, a hyperbaric oxygen therapy chamber. I mean, I'm frankly intimidated. How do you manage to keep pace with all of this and is it is it is you know the the line between uh, sort of uh, understanding your own body better and this becoming obsessive uh, it's a fine one isn't it no it's absolutely it's a fine balance and i think to be clear to pursue healthy lifestyle people need to do very few things in a very simple manner but today you know our understanding of health is growing by leaps and bounds uh, everything about body is easily, you know, measurable from your continuous glucose monitoring to you mentioned, you know, very fine, fine sleep tracking through Ura ring and things like that. I do that mostly to learn about the space to see like what are, are there any new insights, a uh, new way of understanding or how our health works. So a lot of it is really experimentation, partly also because I'm part of cult, learning about new health trends, what's going to happen. But all of it, I think I would say more for curiosity mm. and hobby. There are a lot of tools available to people when you're looking for that last 5% optimization. But to pursue healthy lifestyle, you don't need to mm. do all of that. Just a simple focus on your diet, uh, some kind of activity routine, it does, you know, whether it's a gym or going for a walk, swim, running, you know, yoga, uh, you can do something at home, doesn't really matter, right? So I think that it's a very fascinating that you know, on one hand, 
the area of health is so complicated right and i really immensely enjoy learning mm. about it you know talking to a world renowned expert visiting all these centers um getting new insights but then you know if you a lot of them just validates what we have always known you know since, since ancient times so in some ways you know it's kind of back to square one as far as you know pursuing a healthy lifestyle is concerned Yes, in many ways it is back to square one. But you know, Mukesh, you talked about this uh, this unsatiable curiosity that you currently have, trying to understand immunity better, trying to understand health better. How much of this is now likely to translate into business ideas? Uh, you know, this is a space that's opening up. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of people looking at different aspects of the health economy, not just variables and so on and so forth, but what goes into your body in terms of what you're actually consuming. Immunity boosters, there's startups, there's large FMCG companies are looking at this space. Uh, how do you see the health economy evolving, and what is it going to mean now for cult going forward? I think it's an incredible business opportunity because, as you said, you know, everyone is developing an interest in health. people don't necessarily know exactly where to start what's the first step they should take so there is you know you need guidance you need inspiration you need tools and all of it translates into variety of health opportunities you now we are seeing all this sleep fitness companies coming up which are doing trackers and mattresses uh, sleep meditation kind of things you have you know variety of um, things related to nutrition whether it's in you know, a packaged food um, ready to eat, you know, um, cooked food or supplements so they are coming up the whole variety of you know fitness regimen that you can get into both at home and outside and a lot of companies have identified these are opportunities right and creating a specialized solution some are still in the lab some is like really cutting edge out there things like um, uh, cold baths you know there are devices available for that you know we are seeing cryo chambers coming up in delhi mumbai bangalore uh, flotation tanks are coming up right so all of those make it easy convenient sometime fun something new to try out and you know each of them are a potential business opportunity i think pandemic has in some ways woken up everyone to health we have seen throughout the mm. pandemic mm. that people who have been pursued healthy lifestyle who were on the healthier fitter side you know they were either not affected even if they um, caught covid their symptoms were milder recovery is faster mm. and i think it's been in you know, last two years everyone has learned that healthy lifestyle is very important so there is a big trend from consumer side to adopt at curefit you know we're working on various aspects of it you know fitness is our core focus we built a whole array of now fitness products ranging for apparel footwear indoor fitness mm. equipment outdoor cycles and so on we have created solution for diabetes it's called sugarfit which using continuous glucose monitoring is able to give you real time insights and guidance about how you manage you have mindfit to focus on mental health sleep quality and so on and there's some more cutting edge stuff we are working on which hopefully mm. in the coming years we should be able to translate into products and services well you know that gives us an insight into what the plan is but i also want to understand from you you know there was a uh, in fact just the last few week uh, days uh, this week itself uh, the regulator putting out a report saying that they had uh, uh, studied samples of so called supplements protein supplements etc and found that a large majority in fact was either substandard or did not meet the claims that uh, uh, had been put out by the manufacturers now as this space opens up uh as the health economy uh evolves what do you think is the need of the hour in terms of regulation because you know uh, this is this is also imperative uh that uh, that we do this mindfully right. that people in this space address the opportunity mindfully no absolutely see you know health is the most important thing that all of us have i think this has been one of my motivation writing this book that as consumers we should all be well informed we should just not take someone's you know word for granted you know there is fortunately now there is a lot of science behind health which wasn't the case 20 or 30 years ago a lot of fads will come in people will blindly follow so today if people can take some effort to understand what are the fundamental what are the basic no brainer things like you know for example there may be variety of supplements but the impact of just a simple whey protein may be dramatically more compared to variety of you know other supplements which may be you know borderline you know questionable you are right that we need to work with regulators there need to be better oversight there are some very high quality brands in india which are already operating but then there are a lot of you know people just starting out maybe cutting corners and so on so it's very important but ultimately i think health you know your and my health in our hands and there are so many things we can do just in our home our kitchens how we structure our day some of the healthy habits we can adopt so we mm. don't have to be too dependent on this solution novelties we can always straddle on the side of mainstream science 
we can also look at you know a lot of people in health talk about don't eat something let's say which is uh, made in a plant you know uh, eat something which grows on a plant yeah. right or don't eat stuff that your you know grandparents may not recognize so we can fall back on some of these things that you know people have known over you know ages and just you know yeah. practicing yoga is no brainer you don't need you know any validation because it's been there for thousands of years fasting yeah. you know intermittent fasting may be cool now but in you know all religion traditions especially in india we have all kind of fasting regimens now what science tells us that it does not matter how you fast whether it's once a week or you know extended period or intermittent fasting they all do the same thing in terms of much better fat you know regulation so that your body is able to metabolize fat uh, better and you are able to you know use calories more optimally so things like that right so yes there needs to be some oversight but there is a lot that you know just you and i can do on our own and so is you know anybody who's willing to put in some effort to understand health it's not very complicated uh yes i think common sense and and uh, balance is important and imperative really as you try and uh, chart out a road map for for yourself and i think it boils down to individual choices as well but mukesh you you talked about some of these opportunities and of course what you're trying to do through cult but you are of course a serial entrepreneur you've always uh, sort of spotted trends uh, ahead of the curve are you looking at investing in uh, startups with uh, uh, founders who are looking at this space at this point in time we certainly i think cultino our ambition has been to uh, we one stop shop for everything for healthy lifestyle some of our earlier growth also happened through acquisition so we are quite open to partnering with anyone who is innovating in this space it could be a business partnership it could be an acquisition opportunity and so on i mean we eventually want to you know cult to be their one stop shop where everything about healthy lifestyle is available is validated scientifically validated it's uh, tested you know thoroughly so that the quality is very high something can be trusted just like cult centers today so absolutely very interested in hearing everything about uh, uh, all the innovation in health and fitness okay uh, you know l- let me move away from physical health uh, and mental health for a little bit and talk about the health of india startup ecosystem mukesh because you know <laughs> you've had a ringside view and a ringside seat uh, so let me uh, understand from you what you make of what is going on currently we've of course seen uh, uh, you know up cycles and down cycles we're currently going through a down cycle and this is of course driven by what we're seeing happen globally as well how concerned are you about uh, what you see today uh, and the impact of this liquidity drying up of the funding winter uh, you know how do you see this impacting the startup ecosystem in india yeah sure unfortunately for me like going all the way back to my bay area days this is i think my four, fifth business cycle i am going through so you know there are times when we all get carried away as a ecosystem there are excesses which i think certainly were there you know after the after pandemic and now i think there is a bit of a correction in the system there are some of the macro trends which are not favorable all of it will play out but i think looking purely from startup point of view i feel all the downturns are always really good time for stronger healthier startup to survive consolidate their position um do an acquisition if they need to and um, just gear up for the you know good times you know the the whole thing about you know what doesn't kill you makes you stronger i have gone through two really bad down cycles in my earlier avatar at mintra and all of the both of them ended up making mintra a lot better than what you know what what we eventually became as a result so i am very bullish about the startup ecosystem you know we know all about the you know all the unicorns which are in india the pace of innovation is accelerating even today a lot of very high quality entrepreneurs are coming out and as this compounds and grow over a period of time i think um, we will see phenomenal innovation happening in india the whatever we see today's you know valuation or the size of market will pale in comparison to what we'll see in 10 years i think there is a hardship for next 10, uh, 12 to 18 months there's no question about it some of the excesses need to be corrected business models need to be readjusted i think profitability needs to be taken very seriously that's the only way any startup can survive for the long term and some of these cycles are a good wake up call for all the founders to step back take a breather think deeply about their business models reset things and gear for the long term so i am definitely you know cautious about the next 12 months but not worried at all i think on the whole it's a good thing for the you know ecosystem to get stronger and better for the long term 
you know, using the health analogy, uh, Mukesh, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, you need a health scare as a wake-up call to try and reset and rebalance. And you talked about the excesses that, uh, that we've seen, uh, you know, in terms of valuations, funding, etc. And perhaps a reset is warranted. And that is what we're in the midst of. But I want to go back to your own personal experience. As you pointed out, uh, you know, you, you've had a few rounds uh, uh, of dealing with deep down cycles. Since you spoke about the need for a reset and a rebalancing, what would your playbook be at this point in time? Because you also said that profitability is crucial. Now everybody's talking about unit economics and everyone's talking about cutting down on, uh, you know, costs and focusing on profitability. Uh, what is it that you believe needs to be the priority as this reset happens? I think during any downturn, a reset is very important for companies to understand what their core is. You know, we use this phrase shrunk to the core. So you may be doing five things, you know, for example, even for CureFit, you know, our core has been fitness. And during, you know, pandemic time, it was a difficult period for us. We've doubled down on fitness and tried to become really better in that, innovate in that area. And some of the other optional projects, we put those on the back burner. And if you analyze your business, usually there are always some good parts, which are with healthy unit economics, there are some parts which are not. So people can cut out on the unhealthy, you know, part of the business. You know, you can reduce the size, you can focus, you can also tone down the pace of growth. You know, whether you grow 100% year over year or 50% or 30% doesn't really matter long term. As long as you survive, you play the long term game and compound over 10, 15, 20 years. You know, one of the things I've recently learned, uh, Shireen, is that most companies, you know, 90 to 95% of their value creation happens in the second decade of existence. So first decade is all about, you know, finding a foothold, finding a business model, um, figuring out how can you play the long term game, having that team with you and so on. And then, you know, once all the engines are firing, when you really have a unique differentiator, uh, you have a strong moat, you know, your business model working, you can, you know, go for the scale. So I think people can pace things out. Also, there is very little competition during this time. So people can think about that as well. You know, there is less investor pressure to grow right now. So you can focus a lot more on strengthening your foundation. And most important thing is to remember these lessons, these times, because good times will come. And there will be proposals to go back to, you know, the way maybe things were in 21. So I think if companies can learn and mm. internalize, you know, these learning as part of their cultural ethos, it will serve them even more, you know, during good times. Absolutely. I think that's that's a very uh, valid advice that the good times, the bad times may not always last. The good times will return. But don't go back to the same playbook uh, that brought you to the bad times in the first place. But Mukesh, you, know, you talked about the fact that this is also an opportunity to do things differently because there is less investor pressure. Investors also understand the need to slow down the pace of growth and focus perhaps on getting the business model right uh, on, on uh, moving towards profitability. But you also said that there isn't that much competition. Is that really right? You truly believe that there isn't as much competition? What about the competition from the large conglomerates, from the super apps that you're also part <laughs> of building out? Yeah, I think the exciting part of India's story is the opportunity is so humongous, right? We are a three trillion dollar economy going to go to, you know, double every eight to 10 years, right? So if you take, you know, 10 year lens, we are going to be, you know, getting close to $10 trillion economy. If you translate that into both into the size of consumer retail that's going to grow, side of you know manufacturing that's finally because of Made to India is starting to happen in a big way, even IT services kind of growth. I think the pie is just way too big. You know, as a startups, you know, all we need, you know, starting out 10 to 100 million, you know, revenue journey or 100 to 500 million journey. I think there's enough and more space. The key thing is to have that unique differentiation, solving some consumer problem very uniquely. And then obsession about the product, you know, which is so good that people want to, you know, use your product. When I say there is not much competition, what I meant is, you know, there is not pressure for market share. There may be a lot of other players, but what is uh. of more importance is how good your product is, you know, how good your retention rates are, you know, how good your metrics like, you know, LTV to CAC look like and things like that. I think so companies can do well to focus more inwards and focus more on consumers than focusing on the competitor, you know, which may be going up at maybe a different share of the pie. Uh, are super apps the way to go, Mukesh? Super apps obviously offer a huge convenience. You know, if I can have, you know, one app which services most of my consumer needs, ranging from, you know, electronics to, you know, uh, food, fashion, health, travel, all in one place, you know, which is what I think you are... Tata News and Attempt, I think it's come a long way. Product is starting to look 
yeah. uh, amazing. You know, it's making very steady progress. And uh, knowing what I know, I'm very bullish and excited about you know what's to come in next one or two years. So I think so. Super has a role to play. So does the vertical players. You know, within verticals also there are. If I just look at fashion, right? You know, you can look at the full fashion pie, but there are so many niche verticals in fashion. We've seen a lot of interesting. You know, D two C players have come up, which are solving a unique brand positioning. So it really depends on which portion of the market you are going after, how sharp. So I think globally also, you know, big super apps exist. A lot of very good vertical players exist. The offline guys, offline guys, hybrid guys. So I think there's enough space. The good thing is, you know. Oh, we seem to have lost that line with Mukesh, but we will re-establish that uh, connection with him. Uh, he was, of course, talking about uh, the future as far as super apps are concerned. Remember, Tata knew uh, from the house of Tata, the Tata digital uh, offering uh, is uh, what Mukesh was speaking of as well. And, of course, a venture that he's been involved with. Uh, Mukesh, sorry, we lost you. You were finishing your point on super apps. Right. So I'm saying, you know, the super have a huge role to play, but so has your know, vertical plays, online plays, horizontal. There are many ways to service consumer needs. The people use, you know, different things for different reasons. So as a, you know, somebody from, uh, from consumer retail point of view, if any player has a really unique point of view and you solve a problem uniquely, I think there's enough space because India opportunity is so big. It'll continue to grow and compound at 6 7%, you know, every year. We are the fastest, you know, growing large economy in the world. It's gone, not going anywhere. So... Yeah, so I think, you know, I, th I definitely think Super has a big role to play. Uh, some of them will become uh, part of our everyday life. Um, but then there is you know, enough, you know, they will not have 100% market share. There is enough market share for other players as well. You know, Mukesh, I, I want to now talk about another very uh, uh, important issue which I don't think gets spoken of very often. Uh, the proceeds of uh, the book... Uh, Hacking Health, which is Mukesh's latest book, the one that we're talking about, the proceeds of the book will go to the Live, Laugh, Laugh Foundation, that is Deepika Padukone's foundation. And, uh, you know, CNBC TV 18 launched a show on mental health called uh, Invitation to Wellbeing, and we, of course, partnered with LLL as Thanks. well. Uh, so we're aware of the work that they do, and we collaborated with them. Uh, I want to understand from you, Mukesh, you know, while we talk about physical health and a lot of uh, founders from the startup world are, you know, are out there on social media talking about what they do as far as physical health is concerned, talking about mental well-being, emotional well-being, uh, uh, mental health continues to be stigmatized. It continues to be an issue that not many feel comfortable speaking of. Uh, I, I want to understand from you, uh, you know, how do you see this? And also, you know, this is an environment where the narrative is that, you know, the paranoid must survive and, uh, you know, people are talking about how many miles they've chalked up on an airline, living out of a suitcase is almost considered a virtue. In that environment, with that narrative that uh, one has to deal with uh, and an increasingly lonely job of, uh, of being an entrepreneur, uh, how hard has it been for you personally uh, to deal with this, this issue? Right. So let me address both. Right. First of all, I think it's about time where the mental health is, you know, front and center of the national dialogue. I think it's a massive, you know, uh, epidemic, you know, that's been just growing, you know, and we all are aware of, you know, the huge mental health issues all around us. You know, we may personally feel it, you know, people in our family may feel it, our friends. We all know it's out there, but it's highly underserved because there's very little discussion about it. There's a very little very few service professionals available around it. The awareness is very low. And as you mentioned, there continues to be stigma around it. I think we are moving into modern India you know, where we need to get past all such stigmas. We need to acknowledge mental health is just another health issue. Like many others, you know, we have diabetes issues and hypertension and CVDs and similarly mental health, you know, needs that kind of attention. You are absolutely right. You know, entrepreneurship in one area where mental health issues gets really exacerbated because it is a difficult journey, lonely journey. A lot of time you have a lot of self-doubts. You don't know whether you are doing something wrong. You are don't. You are not able to share your fears, your vulnerabilities with people around you. Uh, I know personally a lot of people you know who have suffered in the you know mentally as part of you know their entrepreneurial journey. But the good thing is you know we are more and more people are coming and talking about it. You mentioned you know what LL is doing. It's incredible. You know what just one organization has done. Uh, I think as part of MindFit, you know, we've developed a complete offering from meditation to yoga to therapy, etc. to address. There are a lot of very interesting startups who come in this space. And it's good that, you know, we are able to talk about it more openly. I wish 
more and more people will come up, uh, come out, talk about it, share their own uh, mental health journeys, as well as you know, uh, help improve the awareness so that more solutions come up and people who desperately need help on mental health and are able to get the uh, right solutions. You know, you talked about how you've gone through many down cycles yourself. Uh, what was the coping mechanism, uh, Mukesh, that you depended on, uh, that you used to be able to just get yourself to say, right. all is not lost, I need to take the next step forward? I think two, three things helped me immensely. First and foremost, you know, just uh, focus on health and fitness. You know, I can relate, you know, sometimes from my Mintra journey, in my particularly like, really bad days where I feel like I was losing it and I have no idea what's going on, what's going to happen, you know, I'll just take a half a day break. I will cancel my meetings, go back to the gym, work out for one hour, two hour, and come back feeling, you know, refreshed and charged up and able to focus. I think, and there is a lot of um, evidence now that physical fitness is a very strong direct correlation with mental health. You know, your focus improves, you know, your overall, you feel good, you know, you are less stressed and so on. Other is, you know, I had a very strong team around me where we had a kind of open dialogue. We would share all kind of issues, including, you know, things we're really worried about. Sometime, you know, you will really question whether, you know, you have self-esteem issues and so on that you'll, I was able to talk it out, you know, with my core team, as well as, you know, some of the board members who are very close to me. So I had that support system around me, as well as, you know, I think fortunately, very healthy lifestyle habit. My entrepreneurial journey did not require me to compromise on my sleep. I always sleep seven to eight hours, no matter what happens, barring some exceptions, you know, which has a, you know, fortunately these days, sleep is also getting a lot of attention, which has a deep correlation to mental health. So yeah, some of these, you know, I was fortunate to have these, um, healthy lifestyle habits, but, um, and, and have that, you know, good system also around me where Charles will count on. Well, uh, you know, it's good to hear that. And, and uh, we, I, I agree with you. I think the, the physical activity does, uh, of course, uh, uh, you know, just give you the motivation to, to move forward through the, the course of the day. But, you know, uh, a lot of my producers are asking me, uh, <laughs> Uh, what to break up your day for us? Uh, what what does Mukesh Bansal's day look like? What do your twenty four? What do you pack into twenty four hours? My ideal days, if I were to manage, like morning six to eight, is for um, fitness, you know, wellness, meditation, morning walk, etc. Uh, eight to 10, 11, I try to focus on my own IC work. You know, where I'm gonna sit down with pen and paper, think about things. You know, organize my day work on tackling one problem to the you know best I can. From 11 onwards, you know, 11 to 6, 7 is external meetings, you know, going to office, interacting with the people, all the external stuff. You know, again, 7 to 9-ish is winding down, closing with the evening meditation, etc. And uh, 10 to 5, you know, or preferably, you know, 9 to 5, I try to sleep and up again at 5 and hopefully and try to follow the schedule 6 to 7 days a week. So you're part of the 5 a.m. club. It makes a big difference, you know, the morning lifestyle versus the evening lifestyle because the morning, you know, if you're able to, see, you know, see fresh air, watch sunrise, you know, it's so quiet, you know, you don't have email distractions, nobody's calling you. So I think that, you know, there is something to say about you know, that, you know, 5 to 8 a.m. time, if you can create for yourself. I mean, obviously, you know, people ask people, morning people and evening people, you can do the same in the evening hours. But I personally am a big fan of, you know, what on morning hours have done for me, I'll not trade it for anything in the world. So Mukesh, before I let you go, you know, uh, I'm sure that the entrepreneurial itch continues and you talked about uh, how you have that me time to go over problems that you want to address and solutions uh, on how you want to address those problems. You know, you've, you've done a bunch. You're currently uh, doing cult and of course working on Tata New as well. But what else, what next? Where is the curiosity now leading you? I'm, you know, the thing is, India opportunity is so exciting, Shireen, that uh, there is no matter where you look, there are tons and tons of opportunity, you know. Right now, obviously, I'm heads on focus on what I'm currently doing. I think writing this book also took some time. Um, hopefully, a time will come where I'll be able to think about my next venture. For now, I'm able to, you know, work with some very interesting companies. You know, I was a seed investor in Guru, which has done incredibly well. Fortunately, I was part of Skyroot from day one which eventually became India's first private space company to launch rocket in space just, you know, a yes. few months ago, few other that I'm actively working on. 
hopefully they come to fruition but mostly i'm very very bullish about the consumer retail opportunity in india i think despite you know everything we have seen in last 10 15 years the rise of e-commerce etc we feel we have just scratched the surface of the organized retail uh, indian origin brands we are seeing lot of activity players like mama earth and mensa and goat etc those are also early signs i think we'll see lot of action in further evolution and development of commerce and private brands in india that's also familiar to me so definitely that's one area i'm keenly watching well that's an area that uh, you uh, were in fact one of the indian pioneers indian startup pioneers to get into a space that you built out uh, uh, mukesh pantal it's always a pleasure appreciate you joining us here on scene bc tv 18 we wish you the very best of luck with hacking health and of course uh, with everything that you continue to do uh, in the startup space uh, it's been fun talking to you well that's it then on this edition you, of young turks as always from the team thanks very much for watching goodbye stay tuned